Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Andrew's Parish Church. We are so glad that you are here with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We will be entering into the Lord's presence here with a introit from our choir, directed by David, of course. The music is arranged by Thomas Atwood this morning and is pulled from our song for today. So let's please prepare our hearts to enter the Lord's presence in worship by enjoying this beautiful music.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. Lord, have prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, speak to your people and say to them, if I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from them and make him their watchman, and if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning, and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have saved his own life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that person is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood 
I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked and turn, that he may turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. And now you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus have you said, surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we will rot because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back. Turn back from your evil ways. For will you die, O Israel, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord.
reading of the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all beloved. With all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. you. 
let us pray. Take my lips, O Lord, and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, we may remember um, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, in that show for children uh, decades ago. And recently there's a movie uh, by that name starring Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. And I watched it this week. Uh, it's now hit the, uh, the movie channels on TV. Not that I subscribe to any of those, but I got them free. I highly recommend that movie. I, w I wasn't going to watch it because it's rated PG. <laughs> but I wanted to watch it, and I'm so glad I did. It is really a movie uh, that is, speaks to the heart. Uh, this leads to the sermon today, which is about behaviors that Christians should adopt. And it's based on our readings from Romans, which begins, let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. I want us to think a moment about mask and wearing mask. In the theater in ancient Greece, they wore mask uh, as an exaggerated expression in the character the actors were playing. Also, act, masks serve the purpose of a man playing the role of a man or a woman. In tragedies, masks were more lifelike, whereas in comedies or satires, masks were more ugly and grotesque. Well, let love be genuine is literally let love be without hypocrisy. And the word there in Greek for genuine, let love be genuine is hypokritos. We get the word hypokritos, hypocrisy. And the meaning of hypo hypocrisy, the meaning of that then is to hide behind a mask. So think of Tom Hanks playing the role of Mr. Rogers. He is hiding behind a mask. That's not Tom Hanks' true personality we see. He's playing the role of someone different, and he's not speaking from the heart. He's speaking from a script. So that's what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is someone who is not being genuine. They're hiding behind a mask. Uh, they're not speaking from the heart. So next time you watch a movie or a series on TV, uh, remember you're watching a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> Let love be genuine. What is that love? The word love is agape. In fact, there's only two words. We have four words, let love be genuine, but there's only two words in Greek, and that is love and that one word, unhypocritical or ahypocritical. Uh, love is agape, and Paul is using that word to describing uh, God's love for his people uh, a love without a selfish agenda, love that seeks the good of another, love that is a will and a choice, love that requires faithfulness, commitment, and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. So love your enemy. The second thing about love, I mean, let love be genuine. The second thing about love is love your enemy. 
Uh, Jesus said that in Matthew. You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So in our Romans reading today, Paul explains how to love your enemies. He writes, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Uh, my college roommate and I were very close and have remained close through the decades. And he's very religious. And we were having a discussion and he said, you know, Paul's writings in the Bible are not inspired by God. I said, come on, John, you're kidding. You don't really believe that, do you? Uh, why would you say that? He said, well, there are many examples. Take this example. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. He said, what kind of love is that? You think... Paul has an idea of God's love by heaping burning coals on someone's head. And I stuttered because I did not offhand have an explanation for that text. And I said, well, I'll get back to you on that, John. <laughs> so I researched it. And here it is coming up in our reading today. Now, it so happens that St. Thomas Aquinas talks about this too. And he said, this is a sinister interpretation to say, put burning coals on your enemy's head. That way they can rot forever in eternal punishment. And Aquinas acknowledges that, but said that's a sinister interpretation. He said, but that can't be the right interpretation because God's love is not like that. So he went on to say the right in interpretation is that if you are giving your enemy food when he's hungry and water when he's thirsty, which is, by the way, a quotation from Proverbs 25. Uh, metaphorically, the food and the water mean give him what he needs. If your enemy falls into a ditch, help him out, whatever his needs be. Um, that will put burning coals on his head in that he will be so ashamed of his feelings and being your enemy that hopefully he will be convicted and repent and become your friend. And the longer I've thought about this, the longer it makes sense to me. You know, if someone offends you, and I'm talking about a particular person, I'm not talking about a group being the enemy. I'm not talking about war and the enemy. I'm talking about a person, a neighbor, someone in the workplace, uh, a family member, you know, in an extended family. Uh, and I've thought about if they are your enemy and say bad things and do bad things, what if you did loving things back to them? I think it would get their attention. And that would be your only hope of getting them to turn around from that point of view to be your friend. And that's contrary to how we would feel. We would uh, naturally want to strike back. But God tells us to pray for our enemies. Pray good things. So I just want to challenge you. If someone is really... Uh, your enemy, if you pray for them every day for 30 days, I bet your heart will turn toward them in love and then start doing loving things for them and see what happens. St. Augustine says, there is no greater incitement to love 
than to be the first to love. And that's what scripture says about Jesus. Uh, while we were in sin, Christ died for us. Jesus took the first step. He died for us while we were against him. While we were enemies to Christ, he gave his life for us. So let love be genuine, love your enemy, and third, love endures all things. That happens to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love endures all things. The, uh, this is in Romans 12, verse 12, our reading today. The World English Bible translates it, endure in troubles. Love endures in troubles. The Greek word for endure has to do with tough endurance, perseverance, endure in troubles and afflictions of any kind. Really tough it out. I know we can all apply this to our lives today because we're toughing it out, like it or not, uh, with COVID-19. And it's tough. And it uh, has put stress and pressure on a lot of people. And just think there are millions of people who are depressed and who are very stressed out and who have experienced various losses like loss of job, loss of income. But Paul is not calling us to passively accept whatever troubles and afflictions come upon us, but instead he is calling us to keep the faith even through suffering. Endure all things. Romans 12, 2 is an exhortation to all of us today in our suffering that equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit and in the love of God to persevere with a tough endurance in suffering, troubles, and afflictions of any kind. Let me summarize the three things we've examined about love today. First, let love be genuine, not hypocritical. Second, love your enemies by doing good things to him, heaping burning coals on his head, hopefully for conviction. And third, love endures all things. Amen. Thanksgiving for the preaching of the word and standing in our promised protection using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten.
prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and the whole world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, for Mark Lawrence, our Bishop, for Bishop Bill Skilton, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our Rector, Father Marshall, our Associate Rector, Father Donnie, our Assistant to the Rector, Father Joe, for our Assistant Priest, Father David, and our church staff. We also pray for St. Andrew's Mission and their Vicar, Father Jimmy Gallant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and in particular, for All Saints Church in Florence, and their rector, Father Jason Hamshaw, Chelsea, and their family. And for San Jose Church in the Dominican Republic, and their rector, Father Sandino Sanchez. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Donald Trump, our Governor Henry McMaster, and our Mayor John Tecklenburg. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, particularly those on our parish prayer list and those we name at this time. Alex Ulmer Lincoln, Tim Lincoln, Sue Campbell, Desi Newman, Carol Rashbrook, David Eckert, Bob Jones, Daryl Normore, Donna Quick, Nancy Glenn, and others that we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the community of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins, oh my God. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you in God, word, and deed, by our own and our own We have not loved you in our own heart. We have not loved you in our own heart. for our sins, and not for ours only, 
but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. Watching your distance. And then look around as we greet each other in the name of the Lord before we break bread and share the cup. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome once again to Old St. Andrew's Parish Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're glad that you are here with us today. Glad to have you with us. First thing we're going to do this morning is welcome uh, Dr. David Nagelkirk to our choir this morning. We are glad to have you here with us today in the bass section. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you and welcome. David has said much about you. Good to hear your voice here with us this morning. Glad to have you. You guys make sure you welcome him well after the service is over. You guys know that normally around here, uh, Father Marshall talks about, make, makes the joke often, when is church going to start back, right? Especially in regards to the fall. Well, next Sunday would be that day. If he were here, he would be, he would be making that joke today because next Sunday, lots of things do change. Um, the family service is going to roll back to 9 a.m. next Sunday, September the 13th. And then one of the main reasons being is so that in-person adult Sunday school can begin again at 10 a.m. in Gilchrist Hall. Now that's going to look a little different than usual. That's going to be limited to 10 or 12 people. There's going to be about that many single tables set up in Gilchrist Hall. So if you want to be a part of that adult Sunday school, you must get there and you must get there early and get a seat. Because once we max out those tables, uh, it's probably going to be on me to stand at the door and not let anybody else in. And so that will be fine. We're going to make sure we keep everybody safe. We want to reserve, resume in-person studies. And to do that, we've got to be extra cautious, but we do want that to begin to happen. At that service, uh, Father Marshall is going to take back up his study of the book of Romans. Uh, so if you were part of that class before the pandemic hit and we had to break it off, he's going to be picking up that Bible study on Romans. Also beginning next week, our Discipleship on Demand, which is our online Sunday School offering, offering will be released next week. You'll be able to download that video and download the paperwork that goes with it and be able to have those lessons whenever you would like. You can do it, of course, next Sunday morning would be wonderful, but if you want to keep it and hold on to it for some point during the week, uh, when you, maybe you need a little spiritual pick-me-up, you can always have discipleship on demand there as well. It'll be on the OSA website and on our YouTube channel. Uh, also, youth group begins in-person meetings next Sunday on the patio, September the 13th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., so outside, masks are required still but at least you'll be able to come together and to see one another. And then finally, for those of you who are with us digitally this morning, watching online, as we get ready to transition to take up offering, we want you to be able to be a part of that part of our service as well. We take up the offering in worship because worship is a part of, uh, excuse me, because offering is a part of worship, correct? Giving is a part of worship, which is why we do it then. So you can follow the link there that is posted in the comments on Facebook or go to our website and see a link whereby you can make a donation to the church at this time. Now, as we ascribe to the Lord, as we trans <laughs> I am very tongue-tied, I am sorry. Now, as we transition to our time of offertory and Holy Communion, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Thank you.
decree and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ, 
and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. For this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now in the words our Lord taught us, we are bold to sing. <laughs>
to receive communion and bread and wine, you were given a little chalice. And I want to remind you that you open the bread. Take a, look at it carefully. Take the top off the bread first and then turn it over uh, so you won't have a problem. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
serve the Lord. Thank you. Transept, we're waiting for me from the East Road by Road.